Hey everybody, what up? All right, so in this video, I'm gonna be doing my uh, top 10 languages to learn. And this is going into the next year, 2023. Like what is what is hot? What should you learn? How are you gonna make money in this field? And this is just gonna be based off of that. Just uh, my own personal interests and just um, simply what is viable. So number one, I'll go with like the most recent language that has come out and that's carbon. Now, now this thing is uh, completely experimental. Who knows if Google is gonna scrap it? Like they scrap a lot of different projects that are out there. Things like Google Polymer never really took off. But with Carbon, it is unlike Rust and Golang. Golang is another Go, uh, Google programming language. And um, unlike that, this is an actual successor to C++ when it comes to speed. So even with languages like Rust and Golang and all that, they still weren't comparable to C++ when it came to actual speed. So C++ still dominates when it comes to like game engines and where you actually need fine-tuned memory management and just absolute raw speed. The reason why I recommend it is actually just simply because it's a new way of writing something that actually does have a, a tremendous potential if it actually does in, uh, match C++ speed or is faster than C++. But right now it's so experimental that I don't really know that that's going to be an option. Um, this is really just as like kind of a side note because um, when you can jump into something early, you can write projects around it projects that are very, very common and other languages that have been around for a long time. People have built names for themselves in the programming field when they jump into a new technology and then they're able to contribute to it. So contributing to like uh, open source is not something that's easily done. I've actually talked about that on my, uh, on my channel before, but when it comes to getting in early, you can absolutely make a name for yourself when there's just not a whole lot of uh, involvement there. So I've seen some basic projects, especially in the JavaScript community, like some real basic stuff that, you know, has allowed people to have like a GitHub project that has a lot of, uh, a lot of stars, a lot of ratings and all that and uh, wide adoption. And that does help you get a job. All right. The next one I would say is probably Rust because Rust is created by the Mozilla people. It does have a uh, speed that is faster than Google's Golang language and it's continuing to get more and more adoption. If you're dealing with WebAssembly, then Rust has a compiler that directly writes uh, WebAssembly code, which can run in your browser. And it's, I think, roughly twice as fast as JavaScript, maybe more. When it comes to picking up Java, I would say Kotlin probably wins. Um, Kotlin is more Java done right. So if you're going to do any sort of Android development, then it's going to be a lot easier to write any sort of Android apps with Kotlin versus actual raw Java. Uh, but that said, Java is also not really going to be mentioned here, but if it is something that there's a ton of jobs, but there's also a ton of Java developers that just have, you know, decades worth of experience at this point. And it is difficult for any beginner developer to jump into that field and become a good enough Java developer to actually get a Java uh, job, in my opinion. Uh, but that said, Java Spring is still a very popular, widely used web framework. So when I look at jobs and uh, across the country in, in the United States, um, Java's probably there's I, I would say just from my own observations, there's more Java jobs than there are C sharp. So that brings me to my next one, and that is uh, Microsoft C sharp language. So if you're going to go down that route, it's similar to Java, where you're going to have to spend years to become really good at it. But there's a lot of opportunity. So if you really do dive into the whole C sharp dot net ecosystem, you're going to probably be able to find a job pretty easily just because there's so many. And um, you're going to have to focus probably on one particular area of it. But with C Sharp, a lot of Microsoft tools and Azure, the cloud infrastructure, uh, they work hand in hand. So I've uh, I've done Microsoft C Sharp stuff for a long time. I, was, I worked for a .NET shop for well over a decade and um, I don't miss it. Honestly, I don't miss it. And if I can help it in my career, I, I don't really want to go back to C Sharp at all uh, or Microsoft at all. And uh, I've been working on a MacBook Pro for the last four years professionally. And I do all my programming work related on that. And I just find it so much more seamless and better than, than a Microsoft environment. Um, and then I use Ubuntu Linux for any sort of professional endeavor, um, like my CodeHawk website and all that. So I use all three of the major operating systems. And um, Microsoft is the least fun to work on. It just, uh, it has the most support though when it comes to software. So even me recording this video is done on a Microsoft machine. And I'll continue to use all three, but yeah, I don't miss my Windows and the whole ecosystem there. But then I was also gonna mention that if you're gonna do game development, Unity is still a big option. So 
uh, C Sharp, I think, is uh, C Sharp and Unity are the easiest game engines I've ever worked on. Where yeah, if you actually want to build a professional project, you can do it here. But again, it's going to take years worth of effort, probably. The next one I would mention is Go, and GoLang I think is best for like servers. So if you need a server that's going to be a lot faster than a Django web stack, uh, everything's microservices these days. But if you're going to set up a, a server with some basic JSON data that's being passed back and forth, using something like Go makes a lot of sense uh, from a server-side development perspective. I don't see this as being used as anything like writing actual software, like uh, that you, like installable software, like something like WPF or WinForms or something like that. But it seems to me that most of these companies are using Go for the speed, uh, server-side speed. The next language I would recommend is Python. This is uh, the language I first fell in love with. And everything's a lot easier to write in Python. There's pretty much one way to do something, the Pythonic way of doing it. Uh, Python, though, is definitely big when it comes to machine learning. Server-side development with something like Flask or Django. If you need a full-stack framework that just has everything out of the box, then Django is still an awesome option these days. I would recommend it over Ruby on Rails, but uh, Ruby is still a good alternative as well. I really wouldn't add it to this list. Um, but if you already know Ruby, you might as well go with Rails. But Python has a little bit more than just Rails. And Ruby, it seems like, is just kind of a one-trick pony. Uh, where Python is not. So Ruby's still good if you know Rails. I mean, it's not going anywhere. It's probably more widely used than Django. But Python has other advantages. I use it for simple things like on my website for uploading uh, videos to my server, for calculating time, uh, just iterating through a bunch of videos and, and just you know appending uh, the time of, of, of the entire course and all that. So Simple scripts like that, to me, Python wins. And even though I've never written Python professionally, day to day in a, in a job, I've, um, I've used it continuously for the last 15 years. The next one's gonna be Swift. If you're gonna be big on bu building things that work in the app, uh, Apple ecosystem, iOS, then Swift is probably better than uh, Objective-C. And uh, it's just a more modern language. I've actually never really dealt with it. But if you, like I said, are targeting Windows operating systems, then it's definitely a good option. The next recommendation is probably learning Bash. Um, we deal with this on a day-to-day -day basis, and it's something that's so, sort of overlooked, I think, with beginner developers. But when you get into your job, like you're going to probably be dealing with stuff in the command line. Hopefully, you're not dealing with Windows, but it is similar. Uh, Windows now actually runs Bash, uh, but I don't actually use it. Uh, well, that's not really true. Anyway, like v VS Code and all that stuff, you can run different types of in, um, interpreters. But Unix Bash is like a command language, as you can see here. It's, uh, but it's something that you will, I don't think you have to master, but if you're going to be setting up, setting up your own server, if you use something like Linode and Ubuntu, you're going to be dealing with Bash a lot. So ZSH is another one. But ultimately, you're doing the same kind of commands, and you can do things like moving files around, moving directories, deleting directories. And, and it's a lot of the stuff that you will have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis creating quick files, running deploy scripts, and all that. Um, but you don't have to, I don't think, be a master of it. It's one of those things that it just takes forever um, to learn all the different commands. And you're going to be looking up Stack Overflow in a, lot, a lot of times when you're trying to figure out how to do something, even if you've done it like five times before. But it is something I think it's pretty imperative for most modern day programmers. All right, and then the most important language with the most opportunity, that's going to be TypeScript. And I'm not mentioning JavaScript because pretty much every JavaScript project out there nowadays is using TypeScript. You might as well use TypeScript. It is a little bit of a learning curve, but everybody's using it, and it just simply writes JavaScript better. It writes JavaScript. That's essentially what you're doing. But, yeah, the bottom line, if you're doing React, Angular, Vue, any of that stuff, it all has support for TypeScript. And I think that you're just simply going to see – TypeScript much more going into the future. It pretty much has replaced JavaScript. Even though it writes JavaScript, it's the compiler that's doing it for you through a bunch of different configurations. I don't think that we're moving back from that. And um, I really have a hard time seeing myself in a straight raw JavaScript ecosystem now that TypeScript is so widely adopted. If you're learning to code, I recommend you check out my website, CodeHawk.com. My courses are fast, to the point, without the fluff that you'll find on other competitor sites like Pluralsight and Udemy.
One of the reasons why you'll want to learn with me is that I'm a self-taught engineer myself. I never went to school for any of this stuff. I've been doing it for over a decade now professionally. The biggest reason you should use CodeHawk is that it's one price for everything. I try to make this as affordable as possible. Instead of having to purchase 15 to 20 different courses on Udemy or an expensive monthly subscription to Pluralsight, it's one price for everything on CodeHawk. Front end, back end, full stack. It has courses on all the latest web development technology. The courses range from beginner to advanced. So if you want to learn the latest web technology, give CodeHawk a look. There's demos for all of the courses that are out there right now. Uh, in addition, there's also my personal vlogs, which I'll be adding more to. So content that I don't release to YouTube is available on CodeHawk.